This is Living Power with Dan Hurst. The Jewish officials were demanding a crucifixion for no good reason. There wasn't a good reason for them to ask for crucifixion. Uh, they were demanding a crucifixion because they didn't want to be guilty of that. They didn't want to be responsible for putting Jesus to death because they, they thought that if, if, if they took that on themselves, then they knew that there were some followers for Christ. If they took that on themselves, then what they would, there would be this riot that would break out. I mean, there would be a problem uh, with the other Jews who were following Jesus, and they were afraid of that because if a riot broke out, and remember, it was, it was uh, Passover time, so there were you know, so many people in Jerusalem at the time, and Rome was very sensitive to this. Uh, if there were riots, that would incur the wrath of Rome on the Jews, and they did not want that. So they didn't want to start a riot. They didn't want to cause a problem uh, among their own people. So if they could get the Romans to do this, then they could say, well, you know, it was Roman law, the, the Romans did it, and, you know, we didn't do it. And so that was the whole idea of trying to get them to do that. But Pilate is frustrated with this, and he, he realizes that he cannot, he has no legal grounds to execute Jesus. Crucifixion was not a, a punishment relegated to by anyone except the Romans. It wasn't something that the Jews could do. But Jesus says to them, why don't you cross, crucify him? Take him yourselves and you crucify him. Now, he knew that they couldn't do that. Pilate knew that the Sanhedrin couldn't do that. That was something that was specifically relegated to Roman law. This statement by Pilate was just really nothing more than frustrated sarcasm. It was just really more like, well, fine. You want to crucify him? You go crucify him, knowing full well that they couldn't do that. And that just inflamed the Jews even more. They were just so angry because Pilate wasn't cooperating with them, and they come back to their original charge of blasphemy. They've tried everything else. They said, oh, he's subverted. He's tried to get people to not pay taxes. He said he's going to overthrow the government. You know, he's appointed himself king. None of that has worked with Pilate. And they come back to their original charge. Oh, well, he, he, it's, it's blasphemy. They pointed out that in their law, Jesus was worthy of death for blasphemy because he claimed to be the Son of God. And what they were basing that on is a law in Leviticus, Leviticus 24, 16, that says, Whoever blasphemes the name of the Lord shall surely be put to death. All the congregation shall stone him. The sojourner as well as the native, when he blasphemes the name, shall be put to death. The problem was that they couldn't do that themselves without causing this riot. If they were going to stone him to death, that would cause this riot among the people. And when men are determined, when men, mankind, are fixed, uh, fixated, if you will, on evil, they cannot be reasoned with. Have you ever been in a mob situation, in a riot situation? I have. It's frightening. It's frightening to be in, in, the midst, in that crowd that has decided that their way is the only way, it's the right way. And this mob mentality takes on, and it's almost like all of the people become this giant organism that is bent on destroying anything that's in its way. It's a frightening thing to be in the middle of something like that. And I've been in them. I've been in them in Honduras, and, and, and they're no fun. And even people who, who, who are passionate about whatever it is that the mob is, is holding to are intimidated by that incredible uh, uh, fear factor that develops because it's like we're going to take over. We're going to control when men are determined or fixated on something that, that they've chosen to do, and particularly if it's evil, they can't be reasoned with. And every attempt to defeat their plans causes them to press on with greater determination. And the greater the determination to evil, the less reason and sensibility in their ways. That's true with individuals, not just a crowd. 
But you know, and you've you encountered people like this, that they're just hell-bent on their way of doing things, even if it's wrong and contrary and evil. If they think this is what they are supposed to do, they're going to do it, and you better get out of their way, or you're going to pay a price for it. Now imagine that in a crowd type of setting. So this commitment to evil overwhelms this mob's um, lack of reason. <laughs> I mean, it just overwhelms their, sense, their ability to reason this thing through. They are just so impassioned now. They want Jesus dead. What started off as, let's just take him to put him on trial and the Romans will see it our way and you know, then we won't have to deal with it. And Rome says, no, 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 there's nothing legal here. It just inflamed it and it got out of hand. And you have this mob now calling for the crucifixion of Jesus. On behalf of Dan Hurst and the